Hi, my name is Shilin Patel and I'm from Duke University. I'm also a developer for the Internet to Grouper project. This is the admin track of the Grouper training. In this video, I'll be talking about the provisioning service provider, and this is part four. Here are the topics that I'll be covering in this part. In part one, I gave an introduction to the PSP and talked about how to install it with Grouper. In part two, I talked about some of the design decisions around the PSP and configuration options. In part three, I gave a demo um, on LDAP provisioning using the incremental method. In this part, I'll first talk about some of the command line options available with the PSP and also do a demo of them. Then I'll talk about caching, logging, and error handling. So here are some of the command line options that I want to cover in this part. Uh, in part three of the PSP training, I talked about how you can use the grouper daemon for incremental and bulk provisioning. But there may be cases where you would want to run the provisioning manually. For instance, it could be useful to debug a problem, um, or if you want to see how things would get provisioned without actually provisioning them, uh, or if you want to sync a subset of your grouper hierarchy. The first three options on this slide, uh, calc, diff, and sync, work on a specific identifier uh, for instance, a specific group or a folder. If you specify a folder, uh, then it would only include that one object and not all children under it. The last three options, bulk calc, bulk diff, and bulk sync, uh, work with all identifiers based on how you have your base stem configured in the LDAP.properties file, along with how you have filters configured in your resolver file. So by default, these bulk operations would apply to your entire grouper hierarchy except for the Etsy folder. Now the calc operations determine how the target should be provisioned based on source data. The diff operations return the changes that need to happen to the target to make it in sync with the source. Uh, so the diff operations don't actually make any changes to the target. Uh, and finally, the sync operations apply the diff to the target. Uh, and I'll demo some of these operations now. So for this demo, I have both Grouper and the PSP uh, configured based off of the PSP Part 3 training video. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is demo the calc operation. And so... This is how you'd run a, a calc. Um, the first command line option um, here is dash PSP, and then you specify dash calc. And then this is the identifier that you would want to uh, use. And this is a, a name of a group in my case, Duke colon test one. Uh, this group was set up in the, um, in the PSP part three demo. And so now if I run this, it'll tell me how this group should be provisioned in the target. <clears throat> uh, so the first thing that's worth mentioning here is that the status here is success. Uh, so that would be pretty important to look at. Um, and then here you can see the DN of where this group <coughs> should be located in the target. And below that there are some attributes. So this is the object class attribute and there are two values, top and group of names. Below that there's a see also attribute that has one value. And below that there's a CN attribute which is test one which is the uh, uh, the extension of the group. Uh, the see also attribute was um, demoed in part three, uh, and I won't go over in detail what that is, but it's just noteworthy that that attribute um, is set to a value right now. Uh, and if I look at do colon test one in LDAP through an LDAP browser, you can see that it looks the same. Um, it's got the two object class values, it's got the CN, and it's got the, the see also attribute. <clears throat> so now the next thing I can do is a diff uh, using the same identifier. And since the source data, uh, since the, um, the data based off of the source looks the same as what's in LDAP, uh, the diff right now wouldn't show that any changes are needed. Um, again here the status is success and within this XML there aren't any modifications. Uh, however, if I go into the LDAP browser and delete the see also 
attribute and then run the diff again then you can see that the resulting XML has a modify request um, where the modification is on the see also attribute um, and the operation is add and it would be adding uh, this particular value to it which is the value that was there uh, before I removed it. Now this didn't actually make any changes to uh, the LDAP. I can do that by using sync instead of diff. And so now the response for that would again have a status um, which is success and in this case it would end up showing um, how the target object is provisioned in the end after the modification. Um, so now if I go back to the LDAP browser and refresh the test one group, you can see that C also is populated now. So the other three operations were the, the bulk operations. I can quickly run them as well. Start off with a bulk calc. Um, here you don't specify an identifier at the end since um, it would essentially perform the calc operation on all identifiers. And so now this returns how the target should end up, how the target should look. Um, and again, the status is success at the top. Um, here's the first calc response, and this is for uh, the Duke folder. And it's got a couple of object class values on top and organizational unit and the OU attribute is um, Duke. <clears throat> and then below that there's another calc response for the test one group um, which is what we were looking at before. And finally there's one more calc response uh, for another group Duke colon test two um, and it has two object class values top and group of names in the Sienna's test two. I could also do a bulk diff. Once again, the status is success. Um, none of the diff responses have any um, changes in them since everything is in sync right now. And I can do a bulk sync, which uh, since everything is in sync, this won't make any changes, but if there were uh, differences, then it would fix them. Uh, so status, success again, and the sync responses are all um, empty as far as changes go. So that was a demo of some of the command line options with the PSP. Now I'll talk a bit about caching. If you're provisioning a lot of objects to the target, it's important to make sure that caching adjustments are made in the ehcache.xml file. The reason for this is to try to minimize the number of times an individual subject is looked up in your subject source. For instance, if you have 100,000 subjects and each subject is in 10 groups and the maximum size of your subject cache is 5,000, then it's likely that each subject will get queried multiple times in your subject source because the cache size is too small. Uh, so there are several subject related caches which I've listed here on the slide. You should set the max elements in memory to be equal to or greater than the number of subjects that you have uh, and this would end up taking care of the problem. Uh, also you may want to make adjustments to the time to idle seconds and the time to live seconds um, for these caches as well. Ideally, they would be set to an amount that's greater than the time it takes the bulk provisioning to run. However, there's a trade-off involved because you also don't want them to be too high since that would result in stale data in the cache for a relatively long time. And this would especially be the case if you're using the same uh, ehcache.xml file for the UI and web services as well. Logging in the PSP is controlled by the log for j.properties file, just like the rest of the grouper login. Uh, with the default configuration, the PSP package 
has logging set at the info level. And finally, the last topic is error handling. With incremental provisioning, you can configure how errors are handled in the grouper loader.properties file. There's a property to retry um, errors. If it's set to true, then the PSP will continue to retry a failed change until it succeeds. Um, and it doesn't move on to the next change until afterwards. If it's set to false, then the PSP will ignore failures with the assumption that the bulk sync will eventually correct the problem. If you're not going to use the bulk sync, then you probably want this set to true. Uh, the grouper report, um, which you can have run every day and email to you, will tell you if the daemon jobs are failing. So that's one way of knowing if there's a problem. Uh, grouper diagnostics can tell you sooner if there's a problem with incremental provisioning. By default, if the PSP changelog consumer job hasn't had a success in the last 30 minutes, uh, then the diagnostics page would return an HTTP uh, 500 code. Uh, so if you have the diagnostics page monitored by Nagios or some other monitoring tool, uh, then you can have it notify you. And finally, with bulk provisioning, uh, with the default error handling, the PSP will resume if there are errors in uh, particular updates. So that's all for this tutorial. Uh, you can click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of the PSP. And here are some links you can visit with more information. Thanks.